वेलकाम टू सुपिरियर प्रफिट उइकलि मार्केट राउंड आप सेभेन्टीन जुलाई टू थाउजेंड एट्टीन आई एम सागर नंदी चीफ एनलिस्ट एंड ट्रेडार एट सुपिरियर प्रफिट बेस्ट इन सिंगापुर आई उल नट टेक टाइम टू इंट्रोड्यूस माइ सेल्फ इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड टू नो मोर अबाउट मी द कम्पनी सुपिरियर प्रफिट और मोर इम्पर्टेंटलि हाउ इट मे हेल्प इन योर ट्रेडिंग यू मे भिजिट द वेबसाइट सुपिरियर प्रफिट डट को and click on the about menu before we begin we go through the standard disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on superior profits trading system the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading past performance is no guarantee of future return superior profit is not an investment advisor this session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience as usual we'll analyze oil and gold these two commodities using technical charts they tend to impact related stocks In general when we take swing trades we like to align the trades with the broad market's direction we assess that using Nasdaq and NYSE market breadth and also technical analysis of four broad market ETFs other than aligning trades with the market's direction we try to align them with the industry's strength or weakness we will study that using industry scorecard and heat map along the way we may go through some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum or the social network pages and look for potential trades for the coming week that was the last slide of the presentation let's move to live system we start our commodities analysis using gold etf gld we are looking at gld using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart together we call this at a glance template because it helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade opportunity at the right edge of the chart only in few seconds from the weekly chart we can see gold declined heavily the relative performance showed that it was severely underperforming the market in qa we are always watchful of the memory trend lines support or resistance in this case support one week ago price came to the trend line support and bounced up from there in the daily chart that happened at this point price came precisely to the trend line support and recovered from there it came to the value area the declining cyan direction line and came down again from there this week it precisely hit the trend line support again on thursday it slightly recovered it also displayed a bullish headwind possible reversal signal on friday it closed lower however it is sitting right on top of the trend line support there is a trend line resistance nearby as well therefore we are not going to take any swing trade right now once gld goes out of the triangle pattern either up or down we will have better idea about its direction and then we will be ready to take our next swing trade now we are studying oil etf uso using the same at a glance template in the daily chart last week price was above the upper boundary lines looking at that i had mentioned that q traders would not like to take any long trade that was useful suggestion this week price reversed fell below the watermark 
resistance level. There was a bearish headwind at that point at the same price level earlier from where price could fall down. Now looking back it seems that the same price level more sellers could come in. In the weekly chart also price came down and closed below the watermark resistance level. This week has displayed a possible reversal bearish headwind signal. Next week if USO starts to go down and gives us a magenta color candle that may give us a low risk go with flow trend following short trade opportunity. Weekly is already magenta therefore weekly will support taking such a short trade. You may keep an eye on that. We are looking at SPY using at a glance template. Three weeks ago when price was at this point it was going up from the trend line support level. At that time in the weekly market roundup I had mentioned that the likely movement of SPY from there was upward. It went up for two successive weeks since then. However, the activity levels are very weak. In the daily chart, price was around this level when I mentioned the presence of the trend line support. From there, price went up and now price is near the watermark resistance level. Other traders may be starting to take long trade now thinking that it will break out upward. That is not the standard Q trading way. We like to take long trades when it is starting to go up from a swing low. So you would have taken long either in SPY or in other stocks when SPY was starting to go up from this price level we would be able to book profit by the time price came to this watermark resistance level. This is not a point where we would like to enter long trade in SPY because it is near watermark resistance and also because the stop level is now far away. Now we are studying QQQ using at a glance template. While SPY went up, QQQ also went up. NASDAQ was very strong and QQQ made a new all time high this week. In the daily chart, price went above the watermark resistance level, closed above that. We are not going to take any long trade right now because the stop level will be far away. It is bullish therefore we are not going to try any short trade as well. We now move to Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA using at a glance template. Three weeks ago when price was at the memory support level in the weekly chart I mentioned that it may go up from there. It has gone up for two successive weeks. In the daily chart it is now near the trend line resistance. That is one reason we are not going to try any long trade in DIA right now. The optimal long entry point was near this price level around 241 to 243. That is when price was going up from the trend line support that was there in the daily as well as in the weekly chart at that time. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. We saw that SPY, QQQ and DIA all went up this week. 
though all went up with weak volume. IWM couldn't go up, it closed below last week's close. The weekly candle color is neutral. In the daily chart, price came close to the watermark resistance, displayed a bear daily signal and pulled back somewhat. Friday's candle shape is bearish. Relative performance shows that now IWM is weaker. Some time ago it was the strongest and now it is the weakest of the four ETFs. Next week if IWM continues to go down it may give us short day trade opportunities because it has trend line support nearby we are not that keen to take swing short trade in IWM right now. IWM's direction will be clearer after it breaks out of the triangle pattern either to the downside or to the upside. If we combine the analysis of these four broad market ETFs we see that price has gone up for most of them. So we cannot say that it is bearish. The broad market ETF show that market is bullish. However, most of the ETFs are at or near resistance level. That is not a place from where we would like to take new long trades. Because the broad market ETFs are near resistance levels, it may be appropriate not to try new long trades in stocks in general. Let's see what is the conclusion that we can arrive at from the market breadth study. Every week we study market breadth using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index both using weekly charts along with three pairs of internals new high low advanced decline and up down volume. Because this study is using longer term weekly interval and broad indices it is to be used more for longer term investment decisions not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. From NASDAQ candles we can see that price went up for two successive weeks. Now NASDAQ index is overbought in the weekly chart. We are observing this divergence between NASDAQ composite price and the new high low for several weeks now. The divergence continued this week. NASDAQ price went up, however new high low declined this week. Not only new high low but the other two internals advanced decline as well as up down volume declined for NASDAQ. That shows that more stocks went down than went up and they went down with higher volume. That is in contrast with the actual price move of NASDAQ index. This shows that probably the price up move was driven by a smaller number of bigger stocks. Under the hood more stocks went down. What about NYSE? For many weeks now NYSE is moving inside narrow range. That is continuing this week. It went up slightly on a closing basis, closed very close to the trend line resistance. Again that is not a point where we would like to take new long trades. All the NYSE internals also went down. Other than the two new high lows, all the other four internals, the two advanced decline as well as two up down volume internals went down and closed below zero. 
index price is going up but internals are bearish that is also a reason not to take new long trades in the coming week the conclusion from the market breadth analysis is in sync with the conclusion from the market ETFs analysis. In such a conflicting market, it is not easy to identify nice looking low risk trade opportunities. And I found the same to be true this week. Let us go through the sector and industry analysis and see if we can find some trade opportunity. There are not many probably, but we'll try to find some opportunities using the top-down analysis. This is the sector performance of Friday and of last five days, that is one week. We can see on Friday, most of the sectors closed in the negative financials and information technology were the biggest losers on Friday over five days we can see that the picture is mixed some sectors went down significantly utilities telecom real estate and information technology industrials went up over one week. Information technology declined heavily on Friday. We need to see if that is the beginning of more downward pressure in infotech stocks. Now we are studying four week sector performance. Every week we study the 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week, green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar, yellow bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together they give us four weeks or about one month of performance. This week seven of the 11 sectors decline. This shows the market is weak at the sector level. This is in contrast with the two broad indices going up. However, in sync with the conflicting signals that we saw between the broad indices and the broad market internals. Information technology continues to be strong. It went up one week ago and it went up in this week as well. However, we just saw that on Friday it reversed. Therefore, it may be better to be cautious on the infotech stocks. We also saw that though NASDAQ went up, more stocks went down and they went down with higher volume. That is also a reason to avoid taking new long trades in infotech sector. Industrials is a sector that is now strong for two successive weeks. We studied the four broad market ETFs. If you noticed, Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA was actually the strongest this week. That is very much in contrast with past week's performance when DIA was the weakest. Now DIA is the strongest and industrial sector is up for two successive weeks. If we use the QH sector heat map, we will see that industrial sector is turning around from weakness to strength. Combining all these signals, you may look for buy opportunities in this sector. This is QH sector scorecard and heat map. QH analyzes the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over recent periods, assigns scores and heat map color to all the sectors across all the periods.
let us sort over five days instantly from the heat map color we can see that industrials is the strongest sector this week the pace column is showing that it is accelerating it was magenta score earlier that is weak and now turning into strength information technology is continuing to be strong over five days period if we open up the more recent periods we can see on Friday it deteriorated heavily if we open up the base columns we can see that on Friday Infotech was the most decelerating sector that is why I mentioned that though over five days period Infotech is pretty strong it may not be the right time to take new long trades in this sector from sector analysis let us now move to industries analysis we are looking at the top 10 best performing industries we are looking at their 5 day score and 10 day score you can see that generally the industries that are strong this week were strong one week ago earlier as well therefore using q age one week ago you could start to look for long trades in these industries and probably would have exited the swing trades with profit by now casinos and gaming is an industry that was weaker earlier and now it is strong this week all the stocks in this industry went up LVS has increasing earnings growth the stock is reversing from memory trend line support Q traders take these reversals from trend line supports seriously looking at that one might start to look for long trades in Las Vegas Sands another stock in casinos and gaming industry IGT is optimally valued this stock has already gone up it displayed bullish headwind reversal signal on 3rd July that caught the exact low let us go to QH find out the best performing industries identify casinos and gaming drill down into Las Vegas Sands and IGT look at their fundamentals and then look at their technical charts that will be the complete top-down analysis of these stocks the analysis that QH does for the 11 sectors it does the same analysis for hundreds of industries we can identify the strong industry or strengthening industry instantly using the heat map color let's sort over five days instantly from the color coding we can see casinos and gaming was weak earlier magenta color this week it is very strong the third strongest industry in this list let's drill down to its stocks these are the stocks in our Q stock scorecard in the casinos and gaming industry from the five days percentage you can see all of them went up this week Las Vegas Sands LVS is a stock that is medium valued the valuation primary column is in yellow color the EPS quarterly growth for the last three quarters is showing that quarterly growth is accelerating the yearly EPS growth is also accelerating for last three years 
LVS pays a decent dividend of 4%. It has strong earnings quality. Therefore, from the fundamental point of view, there are several reasons that allows us to start to look for a low risk long opportunity. IGT is another stock that is optimally valued. Its growth is not that good. However, the valuation is optimal. And IGT has a short squeeze potential as well. IGT pays a decent dividend of 3.2%. Let's look at Las Vegas Sands and IGT using Q charts. Las Vegas Sands LVS using at a glance template. We studied the broad market ETFs just a while ago and we saw how the trend line support levels worked beautifully. Price could hit the support levels and then didn't go down anymore. It went up for two successive weeks. In case of LVS also, price had a big drop in this week. However, that week price recovered nicely, closed just above the trend line support. That week's candle had a long lower tail, therefore the shape was also bullish. And this week price nicely went up from the same memory trend line support. In the daily chart, there was a sudden and sharp drop in Las Vegas Sands. It came to the wide direction line and then recovered from there. At the right edge, it has pulled back and then gone up again. Looking at the price pattern, it seems that the next likely move of LVS will be upward. There is no standard Q trade setup right now. You may watch this stock for possible long opportunities in the coming weeks. This is the other casinos and gaming stock IGT. It has optimal valuation. As the industry is strengthening, IGT is also recovering for two weeks now. In the daily chart, the bullish headwind could capture the exact bottom. From there, price has gone up. We are not going to take any long trade now. Stop will be far away. If price comes down a little bit and goes up from there, then it may give us a low risk go with flow trend following long trade opportunity. Distributor is another strong performing industry this week. I found this stock LKQ. It has medium valuation, has recent quarters earnings growth, also has a short squeeze potential. LKQ gave a trend following long signal on 12th July. It could be entered on that day or the next day using early range breakout technique. Why one could wait one more day and use the real time chart next day was because on 12th July price was just below one of the direction lines. Next day when price opened and went above the early range high it also was going above the direction line the yellow direction line one could take a long trade right at that point. Let's look at the distributors industry in QH, drill down to LKQ, look at its fundamentals and then look at the technical charts. From the QH industry scorecard and heat map, we can instantly see that distributors is a very strong industry. It is cyan over 
multiple recent review periods. Earlier, it was magenta. One could start looking for long trades when the distributors' industry scores started to change from magenta to cyan. It is strong this week as well. Therefore, we can start looking for long entry opportunities now as well. Let's drill down. LKQ is a stock that has medium valuation. The valuation primary column is in yellow color. The recent quarterly earnings are increasing. It's not increasing very much. However, it is increasing from 0% to 5% to 12%. It has a short squeeze potential that is shown by the cyan color under the short squeeze column. Let's look at LKQ's technical charts. LKQ using at a glance template. Earlier it had a very sharp drop. Then the weekly candle color changed to yellow. Price started to go up. The weekly candle color turned cyan and it is now cyan for many weeks. This week's candle shape and color both are bullish. In the daily chart, once again, the bullish headwind could capture the very low. From there, price went up, hit the upper boundary line, pulled back and started to go up. This was a cyan colored candle. That was our first go with flow long trade opportunity. The entry will be at this price level. Stop would be very narrow. That is our preferred kind of trade. Target would be at the upper boundary or once the risk distance was covered. Some profit could be booked the very next day itself which had covered much more than the risk distance. On Thursday, it gave us a cyan color candle again. We could take a long trade at that time near the close of the market or one could wait looking at the yellow direction line that is still declining. On Friday, when price was going up above the 5 minute chart, early range high level, then we could take a long trade. That would allow us to take a long around this price level. We could put stop below the recent low and we could book profit when price goes to the upper boundary line that will cover more than the risk distance. There is a memory trend line resistance nearby. After booking at least partial profit at the upper boundary, we may watch closely if price is able to break above the trend line resistance or reversing from there. If it is reversing from there, Q trader would like to book profit on the remaining position as well. However, if it is breaking above the trend line resistance and continuing its up move q trader will like to hold the remaining position trying to let profit run the industry is one of the strongest industries fundamentally this stock has reasons to take a long trade the weekly candle is pretty bullish therefore i would expect that price will continue to go up and probably break the trend line resistance. However, that is a probability. We will always like to book at least partial profit at predefined price level. What is that price level? That is a level where we have covered our risk distance. And from there onward, the trade is almost risk free. That is an useful concept. Suppose we are willing to take only 10 swing trades at a time. Once we book partial profit in LKQ at the upper boundary level, 
we can apply trailing stop on the remaining position so that the entire trade is risk free and then though the trade is partially open we are allowed to open a new trade because this trade is risk free from that time onward in that way we try to take some money off the table as soon as we can and still try to let profit run on the remaining position from best performing industries we now move to the worst performing industries we are looking at 10 of the worst performing industries of this week we are looking at their 5 days and 10 days scores we can see some of the industries were weak earlier as well apparel retail is one of them if you remember in earlier market roundups when apparel retail was at a very high level people were thinking about buying more and more of apparel stocks i had cautioned in the weekly market roundup that was in the market roundup of 16th june at that time seven of the most decelerating industries were in consumer discretionary until that time consumer discretionary was very strong however several consumer discretionary industries while they were very strong they decelerated apparel retail was one of them apparel accessories luxury goods department stores many apparel and stores related industries were decelerating this deceleration is very useful it often tends to give us the industries that will be worst performers in subsequent weeks based on that i had cautioned against holding apparel retail stocks that was very useful let us look at one stock where that caution was extremely helpful bke is one such stock it had displayed bearish headwind in the same week when i had caution on the industry the industry decelerated in that week and bke had displayed bearish headwind in the same week afterwards bke gave us several technical signals to take profitable short trades therefore if we were holding long position in bke based on the q edge industry analysis we could protect profit in the long position and also take profitable short trades i look at the industry and i found this stock dest now it is up by more than 300 percentage in last 11 months that's a very sharp up move other traders will probably start to buy more of this stock now there are many breakout traders however that is not the key way using q vital or drilling down from industry to stocks in QH, we can instantly see that the stock is fundamentally overvalued. And using Q charts, we can see that there are signs of weakness. If you are holding long position in DEST, it is probably a good idea to book some profit and protect profit on the remaining position using trailing stock and you may even start to look for low risk short opportunities let's use qh to study the worst performing industries identify apparel retail as one of them drill down into bke and dest's fundamentals and then look at their technical charts in qh the weakest industries are shown in magenta color apparel retail is one that immediately catches our attention it is very magenta in the current week and it was strong earlier that 
immediately tells us to book profit in existing long positions and start to look for shorts. We could use the insight from this heat map and scorecard and also from the acceleration deceleration of the industries to be well ahead of other traders. Let's drill down into apparel retail stocks. BKE, this stock has medium valuation. Though recent quarter's earnings is showing growth, if we look at the yearly periods, the earning growths are still negative. It hasn't been able to produce positive earning growth in the last three years. DEST, this stock is overvalued. We can instantly know that from the magenta color of the valuation column. If we scroll to the right, from the performance panel, we can see DEST is one of the strongest performers over 12 and 11 month periods. Over 11 months period, it is in fact the best performing stock. Is that the time to start to take new long position? That is not the QA. Let us look at the charts of DEST and BKE. DEST using at a glance template. Now it is July and since last August it has gone up significantly more than 300 percentages. However at the right edge we can see that for four successive weeks price is not able to go up. Three weeks ago we had a candle with long lower tail. One week ago we had a candle that couldn't go up much and this week we again have a candle with long upper tail. The candle color has turned yellow in the current week. In the daily chart, price is showing signs of reversal toppling over. At the right edge, we have lower high and a magenta color candle. Weekly is not magenta yet, therefore there is not a go with flow trend following short trade following the unambiguous checklist conditions. However, the stock is looking weak enough to at least protect profit in any existing long position. If you are holding long position, that will probably be a good idea and you may start to look for shorts in this stock, especially if the industry continues to weaken in the coming weeks. Accelerating industries. These are the 10 most accelerating industries of the current week. The accelerating industries tend to be the best performing industries in subsequent weeks. We are looking at the 5 days and 10 day scores. We can see for all these industries, recent week's scores are much higher than scores over 10 days. Therefore, the industry strengthened and strengthened with acceleration. General Merchandise stores is one of the accelerating industries. Dollar Tree DLTR has yearly EPS growth. It has a short squeeze potential as well. You could probably take a long trade on Friday using early range breakout technique. The stock is still bullish at the close of Friday. Another industry, similar industry, it is not coming in this list. However, we can identify hypermarkets and super centers. 
industry from QEdge scorecard. This industry is also accelerating. Walmart, very well known stock, it has medium valuation and EPS growth in recent quarters. Q charts show it is going up after forming excellent basis in both weekly and daily charts. You could in fact take long trades in Walmart on 21st June and then again on 9th July. It is still bullish as of Friday's close. You may look for low risk buy opportunities even now. Let's use QH to study the accelerating industries. Look at general merchandise stores, hypermarkets and super centers and then drill down into the stocks Dollar Tree and Walmart. Look at their fundamentals and technical charts. In QH, the accelerating industries are shown with cyan color over the base column. We can instantly see that general merchandise stores was weak earlier, magenta color score now turned cyan. The same is true for hypermarkets and super centers. It was magenta earlier, now turned cyan. And while they turned cyan in score over 5 days period, the pace column is showing that it strengthened with acceleration. Let's drill down into general merchandise stores first. Dollar Tree is a stock that has medium valuation, yellow color in the valuation column and it has recent quarter earnings growth for all the three last quarters and it has earnings growth in last three years as well increasing from 15% to 29% and holding steady at 28%. It has a short squeeze potential. We can see that from the short squeeze column. Let's look at Dollar Tree's technical charts. Dollar Tree DLTR using at a glance template. It displayed a bearish shade wind near the very top in the weekly chart that came before the sharp drop. Near the right edge, initially it changed color from magenta to yellow and this week it changed color to cyan, that is bullish. This week's candle closed above the trend line resistance. Trend line resistances provide effective resistance at the same time, if price is able to close above that, above the resistance, breaking the resistance, that signal is bullish. So the weekly chart is bullish at the right edge. And this is the first weekly candle that is giving a cyan color. In the daily chart, it dropped heavily. That was related to earnings. Tried to go up pull back again, created a higher low. It gave us a cyan color candle on this day. You could take a long trade on that day itself. That was on Tuesday. At the close of Friday also, it is bullish. The industry is accelerating. The weekly chart is bullish. Fundamentally, the stock has factors that allow us to take a long trade. If you took the long already on this day, that is great. If not, you can still look for a low risk entry opportunity. Hypermarkets and super centers also accelerated. Let's drill down into its stocks. Walmart WMT is the only stock here that is not overvalued. Costco is already overvalued. Costco is also very close to its 52 week high. Usually, Q traders are not breakout traders. They prefer to buy stocks at a lower price level. Walmart is at a lower price level. It is 16% above 52 week low. 
significantly below 52 week high. It has earnings growth in recent quarters, not very high, that is not coming in bright green color, but improving earnings growth in the last three quarters. Pays a dividend of 2.3%, earnings quality is strong. Let's look at Walmart using technical charts. Very nice looking chart, isn't it? Instantly we can recognize them. In the weekly chart, it displayed bearish headwind in the beginning of the year. Near the beginning of the year, it dropped sharply from there. At the right edge, the candle color has turned cyan. This week's candle shape and color both are bullish. And it is nicely forming a saucer or bowl like pattern and turning up in the weekly chart. The same is happening in the daily chart. It is forming a bowl pattern and starting to go up. This was the first day it closed above all the four direction lines. White, yellow, magenta, cyan. However, that day had an upper tail and price was already near upper boundary. From there, price pulled back, created a higher low, went up from there. This was a cyan color candle. However, one might not take a long trade because this candle also had an upper tail and price was very close to the declining white direction line. Instead, one could use the real-time fine-tune chart and take a long on this candle. That was a precise entry. If one didn't take that, one could take the long on this Friday as well. This Friday gave another cyan color candle. Now price is above all the four direction lines. Weekly is bullish. Price is close to the upper boundary, but that is fine. Why that is fine? Because this is a case where the stock was in downtrend and now turning up. In such a case, it is allowed to take a go with flow long trade even if price is close to the upper boundary. Because upper boundary lines were declining, it will take a while before they recognize the trend change. By that time, price will go up. So it is okay to take a long on Friday's close. That would be probably one of the first trend following long trades one could take in Walmart after this huge drop. Using Q charts, we can follow the stock as it reverses from downtrend to uptrend and make a very accurate entry using the trend following trade signal in this case. And in some other cases, using the extreme reversal signals of headwind bounce or box, we can catch the stock even at a lower price level. At the right edge, Walmart looks like a good buy opportunity. In this market, I was not finding many long opportunities. This Walmart opportunity is one of the best looking charts that I found. We are now looking at the most decelerating industries. We are looking at these industries, 5 days and 10 days scores. Here, all the 5 days scores are significantly lower than the 10 day scores. These industries dropped sharply. Specialized consumer services is the most decelerating industry. WTW, this stock was fundamentally overvalued. It dropped by more than 10% this week. On Monday, Q daily chart had given a trend following short signal. Weekly didn't have a bearish signal at that time. Therefore, one might not take a short trade using Q setup. However, one might 
start to protect profit in any existing long position. The stock declined by 10%. You may watch the stock for possible short setup in the coming days. Let's use QH to study the decelerating industries, identify specialized consumer services, drill down to WTW, look at its fundamentals, and then look at its technicals. That will again complete the top down analysis of this stock. Using Q age and Q charts, we can carry out such top down analysis efficiently only in a few minutes. We could use the Q systems for bottom up analysis as well. In Q age, the most decelerating industries appear with magenta color in the paste column. Specialized consumer services was strong earlier. This week it turned magenta in the score and it decelerated heavily. It is the most decelerating industry of the current week. Let's drill down. WTW is a stock that is overvalued. It has nice growth. That is fine. We don't expect a stock to have poor valuation and poor growth at the same time. This stock had very strong growth. That is why the stock went up and that also resulted in the stock being overvalued. A stock at a higher price level doesn't always mean it is overvalued. However, in this case, the stock is close to 52 week high, 12% below 52 week high. Out of that, this week's drop is by more than 10 percent so before the drop it was almost at 52 week high and it was overvalued as well in terms of fundamentals it dropped heavily let's look at the charts to see if we could protect any existing long position using q charts this is wtw using at a glance template from the weekly chart we can see the stock went up strongly. As Q traders, we always like to buy the stock at a lower price level. So we might be long the stock at this price level or probably at this price level or maybe even around this price level. We don't like to buy the stock when it is at the highest price. We always wait for it to pull back and go up again or consolidate and go up again. Or when it starts the up move after a downtrend. So we would not look to enter new long trades at the top. This candle had long lower tail so we will start to be cautious. If we look at the daily chart and we can see this candle had a long upper tail. After that, it came down a little bit, tried to recover, created a lower high, and then gave us a magenta color candle. That was a trend following short setup in the daily chart. I'm not sure if the weekly was magenta at that time. If so, then we could take a shot at this price level put stop just above recent high. Now price has already gone down somewhat and there is also a trend line support nearby. Though the weekly is bearish, looking at the trend line support in daily and the yellow direction line, we are not going to take any short trade right now. Instead, if price recovers somewhat, comes near the or comes to the resistance memory line and declines from there gives us another magenta color candle then we may take that as the next go with flow short setup the stock is overvalued it had a large drop the drop may continue you may look for possible short opportunity in this stock 
I will look at some other stocks but let me first summarize close the recording then I will share at least one interesting stock those were the regular topics let me summarize when we look at the broad market ETFs we see that most of them are going up except IWM IWM was strongest earlier however this week it is the weakest it is the only one that declined in the current week Dow Jones Industrial Average that was the weakest earlier is now the strongest there is clear rotation going on or in another way of thinking probably the bigger players are not doing anything the professional traders are moving market up or down the broad market ETFs are at or near resistance levels therefore we are not going to take any long trade right now this same view is confirmed from market breadth analysis though the indices nasdaq and nyc indices went up the internals all went down four of them closed below zero the internals are contradicting the indices moves that is another reason not to take many new long trades at the same time using top-down analysis we can always try to look for long or short opportunities market level is too broad even sector level is too broad starting from industry level drilling down into fundamentals and technicals using queue systems we can always look for low risk entry opportunities we saw some of such stocks this week also walmart seems to be a possible long candidate there were few other stocks as well and we could identify few stocks that are weak and we may start looking for short opportunities in them that is all that I wanted to share. Oh no, where is my slide? <laughs> this. That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thanks a lot for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably. <laughs>